Ugh, I'm dying. Hello everybody and welcome back to another sewing vlog. Today I'll be making Diane from Low Witch Academia. I just didn't want to wear on the wig but yeah, uh, she'll be what I'll be cosplaying whenever that will be. Right now I feel like I'm a latte more than anything with the glasses and the hair. I also love her. I actually love all the characters. But yeah, this was um, a project that I planned originally last year Halloween but that never happened because I had to move and such. So everything I made to the, um, to the sewing vlog is actually from the last house and last year. So hopefully I remember everything I did. So right now, future me right here now is filming the intro and everything at the new place. So hopefully it all works out. But yeah, uh, I love witches. I love anything magic aesthetic wise as you can see. And of course, I had to make this. Uh, I really love the uniform. I love the robe. I love everything about it. I, I just love the series. It's a dough robe. It's wholesome. Check it out if you've ever seen it. But yeah, so... Let's get to the vlog making. Woo! Previously on Yu-Gi-Oh. So it's been about a week and a half until October, and I'm starting this project a little late, but oh well. I'm really hoping to finish this project by Halloween just to showcase it, but if it doesn't finish, well, there'll be witching season for Thanksgiving in November then. But anywho, I got all the fabrics ready, and now I just need to put the patterns together, which is what I have here. It's a e-pattern that I got online by the cosplay Random Tuesday. I'll drop the link below to her shop, but she has this available, and all you gotta do after you you buy it, it's basically you download it and you print it out and you put it together. They have instructions and everything. It's about 60 pages so it's going to be a quite a big spreadsheet. But I'm going to go ahead and do that and get back after I start on the mock-up. So for this pattern, it's made to already to the purse, um, to the seller's uh, measurement so I need to modify and extend it out a bit and make it fit, so that, which is why you have the mock-up stage. So I'm going to go after I put these together, I'm going to cut it out, make a mock-up, and start from there. So another note I want to include before I start is that the seller, Random Tuesday, made this pattern from everything, so everything is included into the pattern, including the hat, the robe, even the belt, accessories, and even the boot cover. So thank you so much for having that, which is the only reason why I actually got the pattern, because I always wanted to make her, and now I have an excuse to. A few moments later. So it's been two hours and I've only gone through 25 pieces. It actually, it's taking a really long time because I have to fold the edges and match some of them. And then it got tedious because some part didn't line up. So I'm going to have to end up modifying it just a little bit and connecting it like this part right here for the hat. It just, no matter how much I shift it, it's just, just not connecting without shifting either. So I'm just gonna have to adjust it and just connect some lines. Some of them are smaller where they don't align, but a couple centimeters of connecting it and readjusting it should be fine. But yeah, it's still, I still have half left. Six and a half hours later. Well, after many hours of taping and folding, I am finally complete. It is literally a giant bed sheet size. Basically, my whole entire sewing room floor area. So, a lot of things about this. It started out fine, great, until I reached the end. And it looks like this. And the reason for that is I got, originally I got this printed at a print shop. And it's, I think it's about 60 pages, but I was missing five pages. So probably left it behind or something, or I didn't print, but it was just the bottom portion. So it destroys the point of printing at a shop because in the end I had to print it at home. But anyways, I'm glad I got out of the way. I got it all taped and done. So now the next step is to cut it apart. What's more fun than, you know, spending days putting together something just to cut it out later, right? Actually, the alignment of the pattern is actually my fault and not because of the pattern itself. I just didn't set the setting right. It's supposed to be portrait, but I think I set it landscape, which is why it printed out awkwardly. A few inches later. All right, so everything is finally cut out. It actually wasn't too bad. I just had to tape some of the edges once I cut them out. Just took up like a roll or two of tape. So other than that, that's it, and what I'm going to do next is start in the mock-up. I'm going to start working on the robe, going to Frankenstein that thing together with some scrap fabric, and then do some alterations and fitting from there. I've made a mock-up for Diane, and I figure out the adjustment I need to make. 
So this one's a little bit big, the one that I just made. So I'm gonna shrink down the the seam allowance that I add to it, and it actually should fit. I don't want it too tight, but I also don't want it too loose. So hopefully. I'm correct about what I just uh, thought about the size and I'm just going to start cutting out the actual fabric with the final measurement I made to it and have the robe ready. With the mock-up all set, I cut out the outer fabric for the robe and the inner lining. For the lining, I used the wrong side since I actually like the matte color much more than the shiny side of the satin lining. Then I sewed everything together along with top stitching the front seams down for a smoother and nicer looking finish. The sleeves has a curve to them so I clipped them down to make it less bulky and smoother on the outer seam. Then I ironed everything out. With the robe looking good and fitting so far, I went ahead and did the same thing to the lining portion. Alright, so I got the outer dress robe and the inside lining all sewn, so now all I need to do left is put it together. The lining is what took the longest because the lining is very slippery and more delicate to work with. It's, it slides a lot, so I have to take my time to make sure everything's aligned correctly and the seam doesn't shift or anything. But yeah, after that, I just have probably like the accessories to work on, top stitch it a little, and I'll be done with the dress robe. The lining frays quite a lot, so I went ahead and overlocked the raw edges inside so it doesn't fray everywhere. Alright, so I actually had a change in plan. I was actually almost done with the robe dress overall. I just had to do the bottom part where I um, basically had two right sides together, sewn from the inside and flip it inside out. But during halfway, the lining actually snagged and tore about two inches on the hemline and I didn't want to risk working with that anymore so I had to trim off a couple of inches and what I'm gonna do now is just do a bias tape hem because I didn't want to shorten it any more than that so that's what I did I'm putting it on right now and I'm basically just gonna hand sew them all on so it's taking a little bit longer but at least that will fix my situation it will be nice and clean this is the magic behind and the scenes. And then I was on to hand sewing for the rest of those times. I actually don't mind it too much since I find it therapeutic when I'm not in a rush. I finished the robe dress and the last thing I'm working on right now is just her clasp that's on her front uh, neckline here. So I already made it. It's not perfect but it'll work with the pattern I have here so I'm just gonna sew on snaps which is how it's gonna attach on the front and I'll be done with that and I'll probably start on the hat next. A few moments later and the robe dress is finally complete with the claps in the center I added snaps to make it attach so I can take it on and off even though there's not really a real function for it but hey most cosplays are like that you know but yeah, it's complete. I can move on to the hat. So I'm cutting out the pattern of, for the hat portion right now. And what I did was I actually extended out a bit. This is the original and this is the one that I just traced and made a new one of. I just wanted the crown to be a little bigger to stand out more. So I basically just widened out a little bit more than the original. So for the hat, that's one of the changes I did to it. So I just finished sewing the hat together I'm actually just going to put the top part to the, cr the crown to the circle part where I'll be wearing it. So I'm actually really happy that this actually turned out really smooth and round. So for that to happen, I usually sew the seams, usually on circular parts, I usually like to sew the seams the smaller seam allowance, such as like a quarter of an inch. And then I also clip it so it doesn't bulk as much. So that's what we got here, and I have the crown to it, which I'm also doing a felling stitch on the seams line on the inside, just so I'm gonna stick a wire through that so I can shape it better. And I'll probably also do a, a channel right here for um, top stitching, so can I also put a wire frame in there so I can shape it. The robe making process was pretty smooth, and I thought it was gonna be like this for the rest of them, but then I was fairly mistaken. The process didn't start to go well once I started the hat and from there on. 
Well there, so I'm finally finished the hat and I realized after basically finishing and sewing everything all together I forgot something really important So I remember to actually wire the comb part because I actually want to be able to shape this But I forgot to put wire on this circular rim so now when I wear it, it's kind of sad and floppy So I'm thinking how I want to fix that I should have just gone with buck rim because then at least with buck rim I can still shape it the way I need it but I didn't have any so wire was the only option that I had. So now I'm thinking the only way I can fix this is to basically trim this off and insert the wire in and then finish it off with a bias binding. And how I hate doing bias binding on circular hems. But I think that's the only choice I have right now, otherwise it's basically gonna plop all over my face. I try wearing it, it it's just not staying up. I try stiffening it with the starch, but it's just it doesn't work as well as having the thicker interfacing or having a buck rim in general. So I think I'm gonna have to do that. Also it's buck ram, I don't know why I keep saying buck rim, but yeah, just for clarification. And here we are, taking a few steps back. Nothing like tearing into the work that you just finished. Alright, so the wire is in and the hat is holding its shape and I'm happy with how it is. So I found a quicker method instead of originally, you know, trimming it around, losing that one fourth of an inch just to put in wire. I already had um, another one fourth of a seam, not seam, one fourth of a top stitch I originally put around it. So what I did was uh, I cut open the seam that was keeping the two layers together and inserting that wire and then basically closing it back up. So luckily that one fourth of a top stitch was there as basically a barricade just so the whole hat doesn't come apart but after sewing it together I'm putting on the, the bias tape uh, trim right now around the edges so I'm just gonna press it and I'll either hand sew it or machine stitch it whichever worked out for me better I'll probably end up hand stitching it just because it looks nicer but it's gonna take a little longer but that's okay Alright, so now with the hat completed, I can finally add on the ribbon and the accessory part. So while I'm at it, I'm just going to be cutting out fabrics also for the belt portion. So I already have the fabric here ready, I'm just going to cut it out. And there's a little accessory from the Luna Nova crest on our ribbon hat. So I'm going to cut that out with my Cricut Maker for foam. And on the belt, I'm probably just going to do warbler because I want the buckles to actually be more sturdier and actually make an actual clasp if I can. So I'm gonna work on that next. I'm actually really bothered by this indent of the interfacing on the inside because uh, when I was cutting it, it wasn't wide enough so I couldn't fit the full circle in there. So I had to do half and half. And now the indent's just there. So that really is gonna bother me. Hopefully you can't really see it in photos because I'm gonna be bending the frame up to shape up the hat a bit anyways. So that's fine. Hello friend, are you here to help me? Yes. Alright, so I finished with the first piece, so what I did was basically cut two pieces out and to make it thicker, I just doubled it. So I used contact cement to double it together, so now that's all dried with the first piece I can go ahead and prime and spray paint it. Now cutting with the Cricut Maker, sometimes it doesn't completely get like a smooth edge at all because you'll still get that foam residue from tearing it off. So what I do is basically just heat up a little bit, not too much because you these will melt because they're foam. So heating it up a little bit just so you can mold it enough to to clean the corners off. So I'll basically heating it and squishing it around into the corners all smooth, no residue left and the edges will be clean. So a little change I did to my little witchy hair. Originally I made the belt buckles out of foam, but that didn't work out. I I forgot, you know, that I'm ripping it on and off and the foam's a little too sensitive for that because I'm using those really thin craft foams. But the thicker one probably would have worked, but I didn't have any of that. So I just remade it out of pleather and it works. I just spray painted a pleather. Now I can rip this on and off. No ease without wrinkling the foam. Yeah. 
and I'm working on the boot cover next. It took a lot to cut everything out. There was actually a million pieces and I had to figure out how to even attach it because there's actually no instruction on how to sew everything together. So you basically just have to look at the pattern, the name of it, and basically figure out how to assemble it. But I think I pretty much got it, so now I'm just gonna sew it and hopefully it fits on my boots. Yeah, I didn't got that at all because halfway through the boot cover making it just wasn't working out and I didn't have it in me to redo them. I'm actually kind of tired. I actually don't want to work on it no more. I couldn't really figure out how to put everything together and I don't really feel like... Well, actually no, I think I know how, to work, how it works now, but I already spent a long time cutting all these out and I don't really want to cut more, but... I would have to redo it because I did it really, really wrong, basically. But the zipper is already all in. I thought I could just basically, you know, attach this to the bottom somehow and just add this strip on with the blue strip. But it, it didn't work out. I tried it out on to, um, to put it over my shoe, but it the fit was just all completely wrong. Even though I did like a, a quick little mock-up for it, but I guess it just didn't work. An eternity later. So in the end, I just ended up buying them because I found them online for really cheap because they were on sale at the time. So I'm like, what the heck, might as well just get them. And uh, even though I was working on the boot cover already halfway, I, I just wasn't really feeling it. It wasn't coming out right. The mock-up wasn't really looking well. So I, I just kind of gave up on it, mostly because I was in the process of moving at the time. And now I, I just bought it and yeah, they actually came out pretty nice. I wore them, they're just a little bit big, so what I'm gonna do is just basically take in the side of it, of the ankle part, or the heel, uh, yeah, you know, the back heel of it. So that's it, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do that, and that should be it. I'm just slightly disappointed I didn't end up making the boot cover, or it just didn't work out for me, because I actually really do like making boot cover, but it was just not really the right time, I guess. The back of the boots was pretty loose, so I trimmed it a bit and redid the zipper to make it more fitting onto my legs. With that, the boots are all finished and it looked pretty good. For the rest of the outfit, it was just a white blouse that I already have and a necktie that I made off screen. With that, I finished the robe uniform for Low Witch Academia. I didn't find this whole process making fully enjoyable since I had a lot happening during the time, but I'm so excited to wear it. Needs a little ironing out, but other than that, I'm content with how it turned out. I am now a proud student at Luna Nova Academy for Witches. Thank you all so much for watching, and if you want to see more of my sewing shenanigans, subscribe for more future videos, and I will see you all on my next sewing journey.